Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Welcome to Kingdom Praise Ministries. We are so happy to have you with us today. And we rejoice in the Lord, the God of our salvation. Amen. 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 So wherever you are on the bedside, in your chair, uh, uh, wherever you're looking, just, just lift your hands and give God a praise. Yes. Thank, you, Lord, Thank, Lord. You, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. All the things he has yes. done. We yes. only hear by the grace of and the mercy of God. Amen. 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 Here. So we're excited today. We're excited. We had just a wonderful time yesterday. It was hot, I think. Mm -hmm. I must have lost about 20 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Out there yesterday, but we had a good time in serving God's people. There's no greater joy than being a help to someone else. Amen. 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 There's no greater joy. It was hot, but God gave us grace. I prayed that nobody was sick, nobody would have any problems, and God brought us through and brought the people to us, and we were able to minister, so we are so excited. Thank you all who helped us in our outreach endeavor on yesterday. It was a, um, a time when we helped a lot of people, and we're so glad to be in a position to be on the giving end, amen? And amen. Thank God we're on the giving end, amen? And because of your generosity, we'll be able to do these things each month. We're already manning up for next month. We're placing orders already for next month on uh, August the 27th. Mark your calendars. We'll meet once again at um, at um, our regular space on Fayette, Fayette and Front. Front Street. Fred, Fayette and Front Street. We'll meet once again uh, there. Also, I uh, will be reminding you throughout the month. So uh, we ask that you continue to be a blessing that we may be a blessing. If you, do, if you as you send those offerings to us, we make sure they go in the right place. We thank God. We thank God. We're so excited to be a part of the giving end of ministry. Amen. 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 This morning, we, we had a wonderful Sunday school class conducted by my brother-in-law, Deacon James Wright. Uh, we came from um, the word resurrects was the title of this message. And he came from John 11, 17 to 44. And on next week, we're going to have the word gives peace. John 14. Verses 15 to 29. Study those verses and be ready for next week. We have our own Minister Vashti Eccles is going to uh, give that Sunday school lesson. So we thank God for that. And let's have a word of prayer this morning. Mm -hmm. Father, we are so grateful today for this beautiful morning. It's warm, but we are alive. It's hot, mm -hmm. but we're still in the land of the living. We mm -hmm. thank you for whatever you allow to come our way. We've been blessed today, God. We know that you kept us, you watched over us, and for this we say thank you. We love you. We want to serve you. Our desire is to serve you more, to love you more, and to trust you more. Yes. So we thank you, God, for this desire in our hearts. We're just not satisfied where we are. We're satisfied with you because you are our satisfier, but we're not satisfied with where we are in you. We want to live a better life, a life that will reflect your glory. So, God, we ask by your spirit today who lives and abides in us that you will continue to strengthen us and to pull those things out of us that are not like you so we can reflect your glory in all we say and do. We call on your name, O oh God, for forgiveness this morning. We call for healing this morning. Maybe somebody out there that listening to us right now just needs a healing touch. You've got all that kind of power. Yes. You've got power to heal and yes. power to deliver. We believe that, oh God. And if it's your will, God, you can do it right now. While they're listening, oh God, touch bodies, oh God. Yes. Touch minds, oh God. There's a lot of disturbed people in our land today. Minds are disturbed. Attitudes are disturbed. Being influenced by the power of darkness. Oh God, set someone free this day. Yes. We ask in Jesus' name, please be merciful to our government, oh God. Please be merciful to those who are in charge those legislators, those judges that are, are ruling, those people that are in authority, please, oh God, let them rule in righteousness. Let them rule in justice. Let them rule by your rules and not their own mindsets. And we thank you for those people that are so confused today about who they are and what they've been made to do. Please bring clarity in this generation. Please, oh God, really bring clarity and let it begin with the church. Let us be clear about our mission. Let us be clear, oh God, about what you called us to do. And we just thank you for this, oh God. Lord, look on us today. Not only our church, but every church is meeting in the name of Jesus. Please, oh God, let your word go forth from the pulpit today. And we pray, oh God, for our, <clears throat> our preacher today. We pray, oh God, you will use her in a mighty way, oh God. 
Let her be proclaim the truth in power and in love and with conviction. And let someone under her under her voice today, let someone hear the gospel today and be saved. And we thank you, O oh God. So God, we present her to you and she would help, O oh God, to not let fear or anything else uh, hinder the message you've given to her. But speak clearly, give her articulation and strength. And we ask these things in your name. Be without singing today as our psalmist comes, O oh God. We ask you to strengthen her voice and use her voice, O oh God, to bring glory to yourself. And we thank you, O oh God, in advance for what we shall receive. We thank you for right now, God, for being our God right now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 How many know it's an on-time God? Yes. yes. Our lesson this morning, Sunday school, about the, the resurrection. Uh, I was thought about this morning. You know, although Jesus... Jesus is the only one who can be late and still on time. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Think about that story. He, I, I was just, as I was praying, it came to my mind. Think about that story. He was, he he was late. He did he didn't make the sick bedside. He was late. He didn't make the viewing. He didn't even make the funeral. He came after the funeral, four days late from the death of the, of, of of Lazarus, and. He still was on time. Amen. So maybe you're waiting for something right now. How many know he's an on-time God? Yes. yes. Yes, he's always on time. Even when he's late to us, he's still on time. So we want to um, thank the Lord today. Um, our own minister, associate minister of Kingdom Praise Ministries, and my lovely wife, amen, Amen. is going amen. to be our presenter this morning, our preacher for the morning. Um I want you to turn to, if in your Bibles or your electronic tablets and phones, turn to Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 2, verses, verses 5 and 6. Very familiar verse of scripture. King James Version, I'll be reading those. Chapter, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all of thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. The title of her message this morning is simply this, taken from that very verse of scripture, trust in the Lord. So after our sovereign shall come, the next speaking voice that you shall hear will be that of Beverly Jean Eccles. Amen. 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 God bless. <laughs> the third. Good morning, family. Good morning. Good morning. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise. Just to know with the says the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him how i've proved him or and oh jesus jesus precious jesus oh for grace to trust him more I'm so glad I've learned to trust him. Precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that he is with me. Will be with me till the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I 
trust him. How I've proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more oh for grace to trust him more amen amen, amen. wonderful amen amen, amen. <clears throat> preach my grace Trust him more. <laughs> Got to pull my reading specs. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start off with a word of prayer. Amen. Amen. Father God, we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. And Father God, I just come, Lord, just asking you that you would take full and total control of this vessel, Father God. That you would speak forth the word as you gave it, Lord. Lord, that I would decrease, but Father God, that you would be magnified. Yes. Father God, just come presenting not only myself to you, Lord, but every person under the sound of my voice, Father God, so that we may hear and receive your word, Lord, because this is a word for me too, Lord. Father God, we trust you with our whole heart, Father God. Yes. We don't lean to our own understanding because we know that our understanding is frail. And I can't see the big picture, Lord, but I know that you have all things under control. Yes, Lord. Lord, I just present this word to you, Father God, that you just develop it. And Lord, again, that you may touch our hearts to receive it. Yes, Lord. And more importantly, Lord, to do it. Yes. And I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Come to you in the name of Jesus Christ as one of his vessels just to bring forth a word that he placed on my heart and the word today is really just trust in the Lord and it comes from Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 to 6 and I'm just going to read it because it's one of my favorite scripture and I like the King James Version you know, there's plenty of versions out there, but I like the King James Version. And it says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Now, the other versions that you may hear here, that last verse said, He will make your path straight. Mm. But I like to be direct. Tell me exactly what you're going to do. Yes. And it says, he shall direct that path. Mm -hmm. So that's the verse. That's why I like the King James Version. Now this is a scripture that I've used for years. And when I don't use it, I don't have peace. Mm -hmm. And sometimes mm -hmm. God has to remind me, Beverly, trust in the Lord. Amen. Amen. With all thy heart Amen. and lean not to thy own understanding. Again, this is a scripture that I used to have on my computer, on my job, because it's one that I had to use on a daily basis. <laughs> I say it a lot because, again, I need it a lot. It's a word that carried me through some tough trials, some storms, and even some minuscule situations. You know, when there was a time when both Michaels were sick, everybody had to be isolated except for me. And I thank God for leaving one of us healthy. Mm -hmm. 
God gave me the strength to take care of my family, serve them on different floors, because everybody in their own little corner. COVID was, this was during COVID time. Michael had pneumonia. Big Mike had COVID. Bash had been around Mike, so she had to be isolated. But yet the Lord gave me strength, not only to take care of them, but to feed them three meals a day. In addition to following up with the doctors, because Michael had, little Mikey had to be hospitalized for the pneumonia. Got him at home. Then I had to take big Michael to the hospital. He had to be hospitalized for COVID. Finally got him home. But you know, during those time periods, I really had to trust in the Lord. Because although I'm taking care of my family, I was also working a very demanding job. I didn't have any time off. In addition, I was in school taking classes. So the Lord kept me busy, but he kept me in control. He worked everything out on my behalf. I presented it, and every time fear cropped up, I had to remember, trust, trust in the Lord. Amen. Amen. And lean not to my own understanding. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just saying trust. I mean, you have to put your whole heart into it. Amen. Not carrying any burdens with you, even when it kind of cropped up. Even when your mind started saying things to you, it had to be brought back to the scripture. So somebody out there must need the scripture because I, you know, I was thinking about talking about something else, but I keep coming back here. So for those who need it, and I know I need it on a daily basis because mind you, things are always happening 24-7. Mm -hmm. But hopefully this will encourage you as well. Knowing that God provided the guidance, the courage, and the strength to do what I had to do is a testimony of how God will keep you. He gave me peace during this trial when my mind really wanted to worry. And every time a doctor didn't do what I thought they needed to do, God gave me the strength, the courage to speak up, tell them what I wanted done, and he made the way for it to get done. Amen. Better than I could have. And when you do this, he tells you the words to say because you don't have to be ugly. But he knows the trigger words to get things done. And he will bring those to your remembrance. So, let me just talk about this little this scripture. This scripture, again, is found in Proverbs 3. And Proverbs was written by King Solomon. Everybody remember who King Solomon is? That's the son of David and Bathsheba. Solomon became king around the age of 15. And he's, he was known for what? His wisdom. Mm -hmm. God gave him wisdom. That's what he desired. And God gave him wisdom. But he also built the first temple for God as well. And in this chapter, Solomon is talking to his son. He's sharing some wisdom with him. Some more, some rules, some guidance and how to follow God and how to serve God. The book provides a great deal of wisdom. But we're just going to focus on these two verses, five and six. And then focusing on those verses, I want to spend a little bit on four words. Trust, lean, acknowledge, and direct. So if you remember what I said with me, what is that scripture? Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not on thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. So trust, according to the Scofield Bible, is the characteristic Old Testament word for our New Testament word of faith and belief. And for those who don't know, let me just enlighten you. Faith is the belief and trust in the loyalty of God. It's a firm belief in something for which there is no proof. It's complete trust. Something that is believed especially with strong conviction. Believe is to consider to be true or honest. To accept the word or evidence of. To accept something as true or genuine, which is real. To have a firm or wholehearted religious conviction or persuasion 
in regards to the existence of God as a fact. God is a fact. Yes. Mm -hmm. The word trust occurs in the Old Testament Bible 152 times. And it's a rendering of the Hebrew word to signify to take refuge. We can take refuge in our Lord when we need that burial, when we need someone to talk to, we, when we're going through troubled times, when we're going through the storm. Our refuge and our strength can be found in Jesus. It's also to lean on. Sometimes you have to lean on the Lord mm -hmm. to help you through a situation, to help you through a trial, to help you through a death. And then Job says he want to wait on him because he knows what, that God holds his strength. Encourage him. He knows that God is a just God and that God will see him through no matter what. Now we talk about trust in, in uh, today's term. We talk, um, I went to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary and it says, trust is the short reliance on the character ability, strength, or truth of someone or something. It's one in which confidence is placed. It's dependence on something future or contingent. It's hope. As a verb, it means to rely on the truthfulness or accuracy, to believe, to place confidence in, to hope or expect confidentially. To commit or place in one's care for keeping. To entrust and to permit to stay or to go or to do something without fear or misgiving. So as I apply this definition to the verse, it means to me that we should have a firm belief and a short reliance on the character, ability, strength, and truth of the Lord. We should place our confidence and hope in the Lord and depend on him to produce a future outcome that is good for us. We can confidently place ourselves in his care without fear or misgiving, knowing that he will take care of us. You know, you can't trust everybody. Mm -hmm. You can't put your all in everybody. Mm -hmm. But one person that you can tell everything to. Amen. And it won't go back to somebody else. Mm -hmm. One person who's going to care for you, provide for you, is Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. yes. Now when we go through storms or trials, we can have peace of mind when we just cast all of our cares on Jesus and focus on him, not on our situation. Mm -hmm. To trust God is to put everything on him. Mm -hmm. Trust him with our whole heart. Amen. Now, I'll admit, sometimes it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we pray, we release it to God, then we go back and get it. Mm -hmm. Then we worry some more. Then we try to give it back to God. <laughs> but one thing we have to realize is that we can't change anything for ourselves except to create a bigger mess. Mm -hmm. We just have to pray and let God handle it. And that's where your faith comes in. Your trust in the Lord. Solomon told his son, and he's telling us, to trust in the Lord. He didn't say, trust the Lord. Mm -hmm. He said, trust in the Lord, which implies to trust with our whole heart. It's a deeper, committed relationship. Giving God our whole heart, lacking nothing, and leaving nothing out. Mm -hmm. Our heart controls our desires, our hopes, our dreams, and our emotions. And that's exactly what God wants. He didn't say trust with our minds because I don't know about you, but my mind wavers. Mm -hmm. So he said trust with your whole heart. Solomon is also letting us know that when we trust with our heart, God has the power, God has the authority, and he has dominion, and he can do whatever he says to do. Now you may ask yourself, why should we trust God? And how can we trust God? Why should we trust God? Because God is the author and creator of our faith. He is the author and the master of this world. 
He created everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And nothing here was not created by him. Amen. That includes you and me. Amen. The fact is, if you're alive today, that's a testimony that God is providing for you. Yes. On a daily basis, God provides for us. Mm -hmm. It's not our intellect. It's not our abilities. It's not what we think we can do. But it's all that he's given us to do. Who do you think gave you the skills and abilities to do the things that you do? If you think it's on you, just let God lift his hands off you one day or one minute. And you'll find that you won't be able to walk, talk, think, chew gum at the same time. You won't be able to do anything mm -hmm. by God. God is there for us. He's always here. And all we have to do is call on him and trust him. Another reason we should trust God is because God showed his love towards us by sending his son Jesus mm -hmm. to die on the cross for our sins mm -hmm. so that we will have everlasting life. He deserves our trust. Because he paid the price that we owed. Mm -hmm. A price that we couldn't afford to pay. Because if we died for our own sins, we couldn't rise again. Mm -hmm. But God sent his son to pay a debt that he didn't owe. Because when he died on that cross for us, he had all power and authority to rise up again. Mm -hmm. Romans 5 and 8 tells us, God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were yet sinners... Christ died for us. God also gave us a lot of promises in his word, and we know that he's not a liar. Numbers 23 and 19, and this is the New Living Transition, it said, God is not a man, so he does not lie. He's not a human, so he does not change his mind. He has ever spoken and failed to act? Mm -mm. Has he ever promised and not carried it out? No. No. Whatever he says he's going to do, he does. Amen. He said if we put our trust in him, he'll keep us in perfect peace. He said that he'll make us to hear and not to tell. He said that he will be our refuge and our strength. Yes. He'll be our healer and our deliverer. Yes. My God never fails. Yes. Although I may have failed yes. in my being disobedient, yes. not trusting, mm -hmm. but God has never failed me. Yes. He deserves our trust because he could have given us the penalty for our sins mm. that we deserve, which is death. But he didn't. He gave us his son to take our place so that we could live eternally. He deserves our trust. In Romans 8, 28, NIV version, Paul said, As we know in all things, God worked for the good of those who love him, yes. who have been called according to his purpose. God is not only able to keep us, but he causes all things to work together for us. Those who are called according to his purpose. His promises, his protection, and love are reasons to trust in God. Now, how do I develop trust in God? In order to trust God, you need to know him. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to trust someone with your life without first knowing who that individual is. Mm -hmm. When I travel, I don't trust the drivers, I don't trust the pilot, and I don't trust the motorists or all those people around me to do what they're supposed to do. But I do trust God to be my driver. Yes, yes. I trust him to be my pilot, and I trust him to be my protector. So in order to trust God, first you need to know him. The first step in getting to know God is to accept him as your Lord and Savior. Yes. Mm -hmm. Romans 10, 9 tells us, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Mm -hmm. Now the second step in learning the word of God is to get into a good Bible teaching church, attend Bible study in Sunday school, and not just attend, yes. apply the lessons to your life. Amen. Develop a Christian life through prayer and fellowship with other believers. Kingdom Praise is a good ministry Amen. to do that. <laughs> Amen. Also, I'd be remiss if I don't tell you that you won't change overnight. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. This is a process. process. Yes. You got to be diligent. Mm -hmm. You got to stay focused. 
and you got to trust in God. Amen. As you learn more of God, and as he brings you through various situations, you'll develop more trust in him. Mm -hmm. You need to remember the victories that he's given you yes. because it increases your strength, your faith in him for the next trial. Yes. Get in the word and see what others experience and how God brought them through their situations. That faith will also help increase your faith. Yes. You know, take some time and go back and read Hebrew, Hebrew chapter 11. Yes. There's a record of David's experience with Goliath. David was a young man. Battling a giant. But he had faith and trust in God because God had brought him through some trials before. Yes. He said when the wolves and the bear would go against his sheep, God would give him direction where he would kill a bear. Mm -hmm. So here's big Goliath and this multitude of army behind him, afraid of this giant. But what did David do? He chose some stones and a slingshot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he killed Goliath because why? He trusted in the Lord mm -hmm. and knew that the Lord would bring him through. Yeah. Go back and look at Moses when he had to go before Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh to let his people go. Mm -hmm. How God encouraged him, built him up, strengthened him to give the plagues on the land of Egypt. And how he stood up before Pharaoh. And how God delivered the Israelites from Egypt. How he brought them through the Red Sea. They're walking away from slavery. And you know, Pharaoh, you know, the mind. Yeah, he said, let them go. But then he started thinking about, wait a minute, that's all my labor. Mm -hmm. And decided to go after them. The if people of Israel walking through the sea before them, Pharaoh army behind them. What did God do? He opened up the Red Sea yes. so they could walk on dry land. What did he do with Pharaoh when they tried to go through? Close the sea right away. Close the sea up. My God is an amazing God. Yes, he yes. is. He will do miracles for you yes, he will. if you just allow him. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then you think about Abraham and Sarah. Well, Sarah gave birth at 100 years old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a miracle. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. But she had Isaac. Yeah. And then you think about Abraham. God promised him that he'll multiply his seed. He developed nations yeah. from two individuals. One, he had some other wives, but he developed <laughs> nations. And then you think about our salvation. Christ saved us from death and destruction. Yes, thank you, Lord. But dying on the cross was. He made a plan when the first man sinned, he started already putting a plan in place to make sure that we wouldn't suffer that penalty of death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did the first sacrifice. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole lot more in the scriptures to help build your faith in, in the trust in God because we know him as a healer and a deliverer. And it's all in the word. Amen. Trust him. Use him. Because God will bring you through. I also want to let you know whether you accept Christ or not, you're going to have some storms in your life. Mm -hmm. You're going to have some trials that you're going to have to go through. Yeah. But when you accept Christ, he helps you to overcome those situations. And he can make you stronger than when you went through. Yeah. He can give you peace to go through those situations. Mm -hmm. On your own, it'll just cause havoc, frustration, fear, animosity, and there will be no peace in your life. But with God, he can bring you through. I will caution you, though, that sometimes God doesn't always work out things the way we want them to work out. Mm -hmm. But just know this, his promise is that he'll work everything out for our good. Amen. Thank you. So let's talk about lean not to your own understanding. Stop trying to work things out for yourself based on your insufficient knowledge of what things look like and how it should handle mm -hmm. and how it should be handled. God knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. If you just trust him and put everything in his heart in his hands. He'll work it out for you. He knows exactly what needs to be done and how to do it. This scripture is really important for those who try to do everything themselves. Mm -hmm. You can't control everything. Amen. And often, mm -hmm. our thoughts <laughs> and our minds 
make things seem a lot worse yes. than they really yes. are. Yep. How many times have your kids been late coming home and automatically your thought goes to the worst situation? <laughs> Most of the time, or well, all the time, we can't see the full picture. Mm -hmm. But God knows the beginning yes. and the end. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just let him work it out in your Thank life. You, Lord. Let yeah. go and let God. Yes. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Yes. The Marion Weston def def um, def um, definition for this is to acknowledge as to recognize the rights authority or status of to disclose knowledge or agreement with to recognize as genuine or valid in other words know God and recognize his wisdom his power his goodness and his sovereignty follow his counsel expect the best for your life from him please God by glorifying him and lastly, he will direct your paths. He will guide you. Jeremiah 29, 11, the NIV version says, For I know the plans I have for you, declare the Lord. Yes. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Mm -hmm. Plans to give you hope and a future. Recognize that even in the midst of your trying situation, God is right there and he will see you through. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord. With all thy heart. Yes. And lean not until thou own understanding. Yes. In all thy ways acknowledge him. He and he shall direct your paths. There was an illustration that I ran across and I like it. And I'm gonna share it with you. And if you've heard it before, you know, you may want to go back and remember this again because it just tells me what how things really are. It's called the legend of the Cherokee in Indian. Youth passage, right, right of passage. And in this legend, the father would take his son to the forest. He'll blindfold him and leave him alone. The youth is required to sit on a stump the whole night. He can't remove the blindfold until the rays of the morning. And he can't cry out for any help. He is a sippy. And if he survived the night, he is a man, according to the Cherokee um, customs. He can't tell the other boys of, of his experience because each lad or youth had to go through it on their own to become manhood. Of course, the boy is naturally terrified. He can hear all kinds of sounds in the night. There's wild beasts that he knows surely around him. There may be even some humans in the area that want to harm him. The wind starts blowing, the grass and the earth starts shaking his stud, but he sits there stoically, never removing the blindfold because this is the only way he can become a man. Finally, after a horrific night, the sun appears. He can feel the warmth on his face, so he removes the blindfold. It is then that he discovers his father sitting on the stump right next to him. Hmm. His father was there the entire night protecting his son from all her harm and danger. We too are never alone. Hmm. Even when we don't know it, God is watching over us, sitting on the stump beside us. Hmm. Amen. The last thing I want you to remember and to understand which helps you on how to trust God with your whole heart is knowing God will bring you through whatever situation you're in. The waters of a situation will not overtake you. The fire of a trial will not burn you up. But whatever God allows, he's going to bring you through. Mm -hmm. Just trust in him. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. The reason I can say this with confidence is because he's a, he has proved himself over and over to me yes. that he'll do just what he said he'll do. When Vashti was a baby, before she was even born, 
when they did the sonogram, they was telling me, there's a cyst on her kidney. We might have to remove that. I went to the Lord, Michael and I. We put our trust in God because we didn't want anything to harm our daughter. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to your own understanding. With all thy heart, you're going to trust God. You're going to acknowledge him because he'll direct your paths. So we prayed and prayed. And when I went back for the following sonogram, guess what? It's gone. It was gone. Yes. They didn't see anything. Tell me about God. Hallelujah. Then she wouldn't turn around so she could be delivered. Yeah. So then the doctor said, well, you know, she won't turn around. This post you delivery date, we're going to have to do something. We're going to have to turn her around. But guess what? By the time I went in there for delivery, she had turned around. That's a word and a prayer that God answered. It's a new prayer. When Michael was three, Michael still wasn't talking, took him to a specialist, and I know you heard this before, <laughs> and this was supposed to be the top social speech pathologist in Maryland. And she ran all these tests on Michael, and then she came back to us, she said, You'll never be able to understand anything he says. We can give him therapy. I don't think it's going to work. But we can give him therapy, but you're not going to be able yeah, to understand anything he says. Yes. And right then and there, I let her know, I am not accepting that. Because I know what God can do. Mm -hmm. We got him in a speech pathology program. And fortunately, she wasn't a therapist. She referred us to another therapist. But she started working with Michael. And she talked about how intelligent he was. And identified, you know what? He don't have to talk. It's his sister does all the talking for him. <laughs> but she gave us some programs to work with them. And there was a speech therapist at Scott French Middle School yes, who worked with them. This woman works, Stephanie Moore. She worked with him even on her own time. And she said, he's going to talk. We're going to work with him. And guess what? To hear him speak now, you would never know that there was ever a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God is in control. Yes. And yes. all you have to do is trust, trust in, in the Lord. Yeah. With all thy heart. And lean not on thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he yeah. showed direct that path. Mm -hmm. When Mike was in the hospital with COVID, mm, he was in urgent care for three days. I know I don't know what he ever told anybody that. They were getting ready to send him home. Mm. And he would call me and say, Valerie, I'm having a hard time breathing. So God will give me the courage to call the nurses and the doctors. They, they knew me by, by this point, I guess. <laughs> but I would relate his situation to them. And God put a doctor on the phone. I can't think of the lady's name right now. But she worked out. She said, well, okay, I'll take this to the other doctors. And we're going to see what we can do for him. And, yeah, you're right. He, he can't go home because they wanted to send him home. Then when they decided they wanted to administer, uh, submit him to the hospital, where they wanted to send him was one that I really don't feel comfortable with. And it was further away from our house. So I said, well, at least I'm getting to the hospital, but this is what I want. This is the hospital where I want him to go. Okay, I, I understand, but I don't know whether it's going to work it out. I said, we're going to pray about this. So when they, got to, when they came to pick up Michael to take him to the hospital, they told Michael, oh, we're taking him to such and such, where I wanted him to go, not where they said they want to send him. He got the best care. Amen. That's because... <clears throat> I trusted yeah, in the yes. Lord Amen. with all my heart. Yes. I didn't lean to my own understanding. I knew something had to be done, but I trusted God to fight that battle. And in all my ways, I acknowledge him because I know God can make a way out of the way. Yes. Man may say one thing, but God has the final control. Amen. 
And he directed the path for what we needed done. Amen. He healed him. Yeah. When Mike was sick and when he found out he was a diabetic, I didn't know what was going on. But I looked at him, I knew something wasn't right. Prayed, and God said, just take him to the hospital. And that's exactly what I did. Mm -hmm. God intervened on his behalf. Because we found out if he had waited to the Lord morning night. like Lord he wanted night. to, mm -hmm. he wouldn't be here today. Amen. You know, you trust in the Lord yes. with all thy heart. And lay not to your own understanding. Yes. In yes. all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. Yes. I hope that word is enlightened for someone. Yes. Use that word. Yes. He will bring you through any storm, any trial, any situation that you have to go through. Yes. Trust the Lord. Yes. With yes. all of that heart. Oh, yes. And lay not to your own understanding. Yes. In yes. all your ways, acknowledge him. He and will. he will direct your path. Yes. yes. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, crying to Jesus. Shout amen. Thank, thank you, Father. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All the Lord has done Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. I can understand why we had crazy sometimes. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. it had not been for the Lord who's been outside, where would we be? That's right. Mm -hmm. This family has been through a lot. So I know your family has too. But he's raised us up. To live and tell it. Yes. Hey, hallelujah. Yes. Yes. I'm living so I can tell it. I'm living so I can tell it. The only reason why I'm here yes. today yes. is to tell the story yes. of what the Lord has done. Amen. 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 My wife was getting ready for this message. I was telling her that, you know, she has a mm. side of the story that has not been told. God doesn't let you go through these kind of things just so you can say, I've been, you can sit back in a corner and thank him. Mm -hmm. Somebody needs to know what God can do mm -hmm. in the face of impossibilities. Amen. What the Lord can do. Amen. Yes. Amen. And every impossibility was an opportunity. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah, somebody. Yes. Yes. Somebody going through opportunity right now. You say, I know I'm going through impossible stuff right now. That is a mm. that is an opportunity to put your trust in the Lord with all your heart. Yes. Amen. Amen. So you can Amen. see, um, I've been praying for my wife because what you saw is what I saw. What you saw today, when she finally let loose, <laughs> is what I saw a long time ago. And these are the reasons why you encourage people in their ministry. Because they have a message. Not one they have to make up or, or try to impress somebody with. All we're doing is telling you what the Lord has done. Amen. Hey, hallelujah. Yes. Amen. How many of you are witness? Yes. I'm a witness of what God can do. Yes. From yes. the birth of these children to this very day. Every situation came up. My wife and I got together. We called on God, and God even flipped the baby in the womb. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 So she brought back to my mind so many things. I couldn't help but be emotional about it because uh, we live this, and we are witnesses to what the Lord can do. So if you ask me why I want to be strong, ask me why I want to keep moving, ask me why I want to share this. It's because the Lord has been that good yes. Yes. to us is that I can't help but tell it. Amen. So we thank God for this wonderful message today. I'm not going to be long to serve. Behold, this belongs to But I did want to make um, those few comments concerning uh, this wonderful message and how God used her in a way. So you can see what I got here, y'all. I got a strong family. I know it's by the grace of God. And I'm praying that they get strong and stronger. Every time they stand behind the sacred desk, I want you to see their growth. I want you to hear that growth and see that God is doing something in their lives. So I thank God for her today. God bless you. Baby, I love you. Love thank you God too. for a wonderful message this morning, an encouraging message, and will take me down memory lane to remind me once again of some of the things God has done. He's been so good to me. Hallelujah. Amen. I just cannot tell it all. We're going to ask Mike to come now. God bless you, my family. I'll come back with benediction. Mike's going to come and lead us in our closing prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. Thank you for once again visiting this household, visiting this ministry, visiting everybody on the sound of our voices right now, Lord. Thank you for all the testimonies that we have. We have so many, so many more that may not even come to mind. But we know that you you let trials come to our lives, not to break us, but to make us. Yes. And more and more in your image, Lord. You're a strong man when you walk this earth, and you're a strong God on an everyday basis, Lord. Yes. 
God. Thank you for your son sacrificing his life, his earthly life, so we can have eternal life with him. Mm. I can't say thank you enough, Lord. He went through so much pain that we deserve. The price of sin is still death, but you mm. pay that price for yes. us. That's something we take for granted, Lord. We can't say sorry enough, but we, we bend the knee to you, Lord. You're our Lord and Savior. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, God. Oh, Going down the memory lane, I, I think back to all, so many other trials in my life. But you brought me through each one. Mm -hmm. Yes. My darkest days, you are a shining light, Lord. Yes. And I, if I look toward the world, I just get more darkness. But when I look to you, to your word, to a relationship with you, I see brightness. I see joy. In the midst of all my battles, you gave me joy, Lord. Yes. I was told I wouldn't ever walk again. And I couldn't help but crack jokes, laugh throughout the hospital. We we're making jokes. My dad's pushing me in the walker. I was like, oh, God, yeah. in the wheelchair. He was, he was pushing me in a wheelchair. And I said, Dad, just push me down that hall because it's a steep slope. I was like, I'm going to have fun. I ain't going to feel the pain. <laughs> um, but you gave me that sense of humor to get me through my dark times, Lord. I can't say thank you enough, Lord. The simple fact people understand anything I say. All by itself. It's a miracle. Yes, hallelujah. The top specialist said you'll never be able to understand a word I say. But you are the specialist of, of all specialists. Thank you, Lord. You're the creator of the heavens and the earth. Yes. There's nothing beyond us in our worlds, our many worlds. Because we, we, we can't help but look at what we go through on a regular basis. But there's so much more to the universe. There's so much more than just our own personal worlds. we got to look for look outward and see all that you have created, all that you have done. There's nothing that's going in our own personal lives that you can't handle, that's right. that we can't give to you. That's right. No matter what weight this world hands to us, we can just hand it to you. There's no more anxiety if we give it to you. And so much people going through so much mental stuff because they feel like it's all on themselves. Mm -hmm. If they just simply realize that you can, you can handle it all, that's, that's a major weight off their life. They'll have that peace that they deserve, the peace that they are craving, the joy that they are crazy, craving, what they're fiending for, what they're chasing the wrong things in this world for. They try to find happiness in what's happening, but you give eternal joy. No matter what's happening, you give us joy. You give us peace. You give us love eternally, Lord. Lord, I can't say thank you enough. Thank you for this message that you brought forth through yes. my mom. Um, she's been she's been studying and studying and studying. You can tell she put the work in, and you you delivered it for her, Lord. Praise God. Lord, thank you. Can, continue to keep your hand on this ministry, on this family. Yes, yes. And if you're not in it, we're not going to go in it. Yes. We want to walk as you walk. You are our shepherd. We shall not want. We shall not wander away from you, Lord. You lead us to still waters. We're going to trust in you that you're going to take this ministry where you want it to go. And allow us to touch the lives and draw more people to you. Yes, we just want to add to your flock, Lord. Yes. Lord, Please touch every heart, every mind, and the sound of my voice right now. Touch the hearts and the minds of the people that we come in contact with, Lord. Show them that, that it's a domino effect of praise and joy and peace, all the fruits of the Spirit. They just need, if they let our lives be a shining light of you, so they can say, oh, where did you get that? Oh, let me show you. Let me introduce you to a man I know, to a God I know. He's better than your best friend. He'll be there no matter what's going on. Yes. There's nothing you can't get to him that you can't handle. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 amen, amen, amen. What a wonderful, wonderful experience this day. The Lord has blessed us with a wonderful experience today. We still feel his presence in his place. Amen. Amen. We're so grateful to God for all the things he's done. He's amazing. He's amazing. He's amazing. Yes. I want to take this opportunity right now to, before we close out these last few moments, to make sure that you understand who Christ is, to understand him as your Savior and Lord, that you would take
take this moment, if you have not done so, to ask him to come into your life and to change you. All it takes is this one touch. Hallelujah. Amen. Just one word. We're looking in Sunday school about the word of resurrection, the word of peace. All it takes is one word. Amen. Amen. And he'll save you. Amen. Ask the Lord to come into your life and take control of your life. He will right now. Right now. You don't have to be in a church, at an altar. Uh, you don't have to light candles. All you got to do is ask the Lord to come in. Amen. He'll come in and save you right now. Because the, I, I hear the, the word of God telling us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Amen. son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting Amen. life. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. If you believe in him, he'll give you that life. So I offer Christ to you today. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Yes. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. I confess I turn from my sin for ways not turn now to you. And I ask you to be my Savior, my Lord. If you pray a prayer like that, pr talk to God like that, he will come in the moment you ask him to come in, and he'll save you. Amen. Amen. How many of those able to say it? Yes, yes. Yes. yes, yes. So we thank God for you today. May God's richest blessings be upon you. Remember, we're not, we're still on break for our Friday night class. We'll be back here on Sunday morning. We're in the book of John. We're dealing with the word of peace, Vashti. Ephesus is coming, John 14. And be, with, be with us that morning at 9. Then we'll be back here again at 11 a.m. or next Sunday morning, Lord willing, amen, to bring to you another uh, 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 worship experience with King and Praise Ministry. Keep us in your prayers as we keep you in our prayers. God be with you. May his richest blessings be upon you and your home. Let his peace abide in your home and bring healing and restoration to you. In Jesus' name, Kingdom Praise Ministry is now signing out. God bless you, family. We love you. Amen. Amen.